Lipa Schmelzer is a singer, composer, lyricist, very talented. But it doesn't mean I work like a crook. I don't prepare because I improvise, it still comes out nice. And I never say the same thing twice. Because I never say the right thing. I try to sing, enjoy the pain. Oh, why do you have to? Like oh, why this way? Yes. You're having fun. If you're doing something exciting, you're doing something meaningful, you move along with it. What makes the world a beautiful place is that there are so many different. You can be very proud of your way of life and leave space for other people. Even when we don't agree with them at all. Coming to visit today? We're gonna see uh, 770 Eastern Parkway, which is the headquarters of the Lubavitch. What's the importance of this place? The center of what today is probably the largest Hasidic uh, group in the world, mm -hmm. spread out in over 100 different countries. It's like a center of everything. Yeah. What's the next uh, country you're going to? I don't know, we're working on something right now, so I can't really talk, but uh, thanks for coming by. <laughs> hey, Mr. Popular. <laughs> Ceci, one day, one day with the Jewish community, and you're already like, on Jewish time. An hour late. Okay. Right? <laughs> I know. This is so. 770 Eastern Park. This is the home of the Chabad Lubavitch Worldwide Movement, which has uh, close to 6,000 representatives in over 110 countries, like Thailand, uh, as well as the Chabad communities, which uh, close to a thousand Chabad communities around the world. One thing the rabbi may not have told you is that this building is so iconic in, uh, in Hasidic Jewish life. There are replicas of this building all over the world. Okay. There's one in LA, there's one in Australia, there's one in Israel. Buildings that were built to look exactly like this. So how many are there around the world? I think there's all close to 20 now. Actually, one of the numerical values of 770 is Ufarat stuff, to spread forth. So the expulsion of Jewish uh, Chabad philosophy around the world. Hello. Hi, hello. Welcome. Hello. This rabbi, with this long white beard, uh, is responsible for some amazing technological advances. Uh, not today, but going back to the 1960s and 70s. If you come and take a look at this picture, you can see the Rebbe sitting in the middle. This is called the Fabrenium. And they're able to talk for six, seven, eight hours without notes about current events, topics, deep uh, philosophical ideas, deep ideas in the Torah. And there would be thousands of people that would watch and sit, sit and listen. The Rebbe is a key figure in Chabad. He spoke, he taught, he met with people, he inspired people. He's a man who worked 19, 20 hours a day to bring this world to its ultimate perfection. For hours he spoke in Yiddish, while the communications center retransmitted the message around the world to 118 different places. Hello, Miami. Oh my God. Yeah, the phone, like the yeah. old phone. They would open up this piece and they would connect these wires mm -hmm. together and that's the way they would uh, create the early version of the broadcast of the broadcast and the conferences if somebody was on the, on the phone and it fell off there was one red line that was open we like what? to joke that it's direct connection the direct line to god but <laughs> it, was always, it was always the open line where people could call in but you see over here you know all the different uh, cities and countries milwaukee detroit caracas venezuela australia oh, madison gosh. wisconsin argentina brazil so first it's like this one? The original was in the 70s was this uh -huh. and then with time as technology and evolved. And now it's this one? Yeah, this well is now, now. now already... Now it's like on internet. <laughs> now everything is exactly. The Rebbe every Sunday would stand. The Rebbe was a people's person. He, the Rebbe would meet people and he would give them a dollar to give to charity. Because he believed that when two people met, something good should happen for a third person. So most world leaders lock themselves up behind secretaries and, and advisors and you can't get a meeting with them for three years. You see over here the lines of people. Oh every God. Sunday, three, four, five, six thousand people would oh come. Okay. I'll take you to get a quick pick at 
just to understand the magnitude of where Chabad started in America. Okay. So you can walk in for a minute and take a picture. Yeah. Is it okay? This was the original synagogue. I have one, one question. Why do you have to, like, how can I say it? Like, oh, this way. way. Yeah, this because, way. Because for us, when you study, it's not just an intellectual pursuit. If you're having fun, if you're ever doing something exciting, if you do something meaningful, you're invested in it. You move along with it. Okay. This is their studying which has been around for thousands of years. The same texts and the same black and white copies. But like can you like analyze the like, discuss about the Torah and or That's what they're doing. It's exactly hey. what they're doing. Not me not just memorizing. No, not at all. It's all the whole the evolving and development of Torah. It's all about asking the question and coming up with an answer. I read somewhere that they said like the way Hasidic live is just exactly like 1800. We try, but it's, uh, we're not Amish. We're, we live in today's world, right? We have our, our ideals haven't changed. Our values haven't changed. Our passion, our commitment hasn't changed. But the beauty of the Torah is that it's applicable in every situation. It's a new perspective. An old perspective that you discover. Uh, okay, yes! <laughs> Let's, uh, we're going to take a quick walk over okay. for five, ten minutes to the Jewish Children's Museum. Okay, okay, we're sure. Be very quick and then, okay. come back. and then we'll go see the office where Rabbi Dukes worked. Okay. Uh, so that we can finish. Okay. Perfect, yes. Okay. Museum? Yes, $40 million. Okay. Hi. 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 Yeah, this is a Shabbat table. Ah, some wine, the braids. foods and materials and over here if you come over here this is the holiday we just passed the holiday Shavuot when the Jewish people became a nation and received the Torah what a long trip from Egypt have you seen Moses <laughs> Amazing. Is it amazing? Oh my god, if I were a kid, huh? I would just come here all the time. To the offices of the headquarter. Okay. Franchise headquarters, the engine. <laughs> I like how you say the franchise headquarters, okay? For the 6,000 Chabad rabbis around the world, a lot of the B2B, the support. When a rabbi lives in Thailand and there's no large Jewish community and his kids are growing up without Jewish friends, he takes care of them. But uh, Rabbi Groner, Rabbi Michael Groner, he's the one that's today coordinating and directing the project because. In Jewish uh, tradition, the best thing you can do for someone who passes away are study and do good good things in his memory. Yeah. How is it going? It's very good. I very much enjoy this. 
Yeah. When I started, Yudi was already in the hospital, and he he pulled me from his hospital bed, and he asked me how things are going, and thank God I'm able to continue his uh, his legacy, continue his mission. We also have a Spanish desk, so uh, do I? a the Spanish desk. Spanish so, desk. Hi, Cohen. He's the one that takes all of that and Hi. translates it into Spanish. Hola. So. Muy bien. Tú? I'll give you. We'll just walk into my okay. office for one moment. I'll give you some insight into Yay. some of the things that. I just wonder, like, what's the most meaningful in a Jewish life? For me, mm. life. Mm? Life is the most meaningful. Every moment of your day is accounted for. Everything you do has a purpose. How do you know which one is the purpose in life? How do you know which one? Mm. Usually the hardest thing for you to do is the most important one. What do you view on, like, can you, maybe you can, <laughs> you can sit a little. What do you, like, view in this present time when it feels like you look at people like they're so different, like different beliefs, different opinions, with a war and everything. First of all, I think that what makes the world a beautiful place is that there are so many different, right? What makes an orchestra beautiful is that there's so many different instruments playing together. Everybody has to realize the value that the other brings to the table. And you can be very proud of your way of life and leave space for other people and allow them to also be a part of the symphony and the orchestra. Even when we don't agree with them at all? We, even if we don't agree with them at all, in what sense? Do we not agree that the sky is blue and that, the, uh, you know, that, 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 that we all have to coexist? Lipa Schmelzer is his name. He's a famous Hasidic pop star. Yeah, singer, composer, lyricist, very talented guy. Mm. All I would say is see him for yourself and you'll understand. Okay, okay, sure. <laughs> Nice to meet you. Hi, nice to meet you. Let's see, everything Sorry. is like a small camera, comes very big. In the olden days, I think everything was very big, big. and it finished small. <laughs> so you see what impact small people like me can make. Oh my god! <laughs> That's a cool introduction. Yes. <laughs> you go for the music, you go for the art. Nice meeting you! Likewise. Okay, so this room yeah. is, is oh. a studio. Very colorful though. Yeah, thank you. I even painted the speakers. That means I lost the guarantee on it. Ooh, it's so specific for me. Nobody doesn't know Yiddish. They can feel my song. I know, I feel it. There's only one God. They were terrorists. They took the child. They picked him up. They took him outside. They took, they took his life. Here, yeah, music gives you a place to think. When you create a music, normally, like, what kind of message you want to send out? I'm trying to bring this, some of the most, st uh, most amazing, amazing stories for, also that has messages how to behave, mm -hmm. and also just deep stories of where we come from, mm -hmm. that was hard for us to comprehend. Mm -hmm. But with the music and with the song, it brings the story to the head. Music, paint sounds, but how do you paint sounds? Do I just make an abstract painting and say this is what I feel I contribute to this song? I want to show you, I want to demonstrate a little bit of how it is to paint a song. So, so I'll take the blue, I'll go put a little bit white, one second. I'll mix it, I'll do it like this, like a mix, like a mix of blue and white. I'll mix it on the brush. My kind is more soft. So you'll see we can go look. 
This is like painting rhythm, but then my challenge comes in. Yeah, but what will people see? They'll just think that I just did it abstract and I have to explain to them. But it's all the ego talking because doing art should be just expressing myself. Rhythm, rhythm, everything should be rhythm. The whole world is rhythm. And then I'll see where it takes me, you know? He came with a camera, he came with a look. I didn't prepare, I didn't prepare a book. But it doesn't mean I work like a crook. I don't prepare because I improvise, it still comes out nice. And I didn't never say the same thing twice. Because I try to do the right thing, I try to sing, enjoy to bring. Oh, everything is in the head. I shouldn't get mad. You know, the fact that I'm not somebody else it doesn't make me sad. I'm so happy because what I do what nobody else does, and that's why I'm glad. And they have their things, they have their gifts. But the thing is that we're here, and I can only be myself and uh, do the best that I, I can do. And do the best that you can do. All that I just said is not my own thing, it's a thing that the world goes by. It's true. Whoa! <laughs> The reason I want to share this lifestyle is because I feel like there are so many communities that are misunderstood. Uh, for example, I myself have done a lot of traveling in the Middle East and the Arab world, and I feel like they are the the Arabs, the Muslims are very misunderstood, and there's a few loud ones who make a lot of noise and give a bad impression to the rest of them. So therefore, I feel like my community, additionally, is also very misunderstood, underrepresented uh, online. So I try to bring people in to see what it's really all about. Not just stay with the impressions that they get from movies and TV, but to get their own real impression of what's going on here and then they can decide for themselves if it's a good community or not. That's so cool. And thank you so much for like taking me around three for three days. Anytime, Mint. You're welcome back oh anytime. And I hope I hope that uh, we will work together many more times in the future. Don't forget to. Yeah, subscribe yes. to my channel, actually, my science. Mint is going to put a link, I hope. Wait, did you have a link? I want you to subscribe. It's a great place. Okay, let's go to the next one. Bye. Uh, so what do you got? Exactly. <laughs>